The movie Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is here, and that's great. It's going to be a fun movie, but I prefer the real Sonic 2. I said the real Sonic 2. Perfection. Today we're talking about Sonic the Hedgehog 2 for the Sega Game Gear. Okay, the Sonic 2 game that I know best is the Sonic the Hedgehog 2 for the Game Gear. Because as a child, I was firmly entrenched on the Nintendo side of the console wars. I never had any Sega systems, so I never really played the Sega Genesis Sonic 2, except for, you know, like, store kiosks. But at summer daycare, I'd bring my Nintendo Game Boy and a few games, and my friends would bring their Game Gears. That was Sega's portable system. And during the 90s, we'd play each other's systems all day. So I got a lot of time with the Game Gear version of Sonic the Hedgehog 2. But I could never get past that first world. Because the first boss, it's too hard. Three levels in, about five minutes of progress, couldn't get any farther. There were no passwords, no save files. That's where the game ended for me. And I tried dozens of times over those summers. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 for the Game Gear also came out a week before the Genesis Sonic the Hedgehog 2 in 1992. So in some ways, I am right. This is the quote-unquote true Sonic 2. And the artwork and title screen make it look like the two Sonic 2 games are the same, like they have the same title and Tails is pasted all over it, but the Game Gear game is a completely different game with new levels and a new story. So in the Genesis Sonic 2, Sonic teams up with his best friend Miles Tails Prower to fight Dr. Robotnik, but in the Game Gear games, things you know immediately pivot from the Genesis version because Dr. Robotnik has kidnapped Tails. And that's your story. You're going to get saved Tails in this Game Gear game. And the Sega Genesis games were marketed on the Genesis power and speed. This can only be done on the Genesis, which was, you know, kind of true. And the Game Gear didn't have that power. So how, how would it work? Honestly, it ended up pretty well. Sonic's still fast on the Game Gear. The Game Gear Sonic 2 is also available on the Nintendo 3DS digital store. Remember, that is shutting down soon. So this is a perfect time as any to check it out. Also, the 3DS version allows save states to help me cheese through that first boss that I never beat as a kid. Sonic, just in general, traditionally struggles with its action because he's going so fast, it's hard to render obstacles and give the player enough time to react. So there's a lot of, you know, crashing into things. And the Game Gear Sonic 2 has this problem, but worse. For comparison, the Sega Genesis has a screen size of 256 pixels wide by 224 pixels tall, whereas the Game Gear has a width of 160 pixels wide by 144 tall. And uh, if you do the math, blah, 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 basically the Game Gear has 40% of the play space. The Nintendo Game Boy similarly has a small resolution compared to the other Nintendo consoles. Super Mario Land got around this limitation by making the characters really, really small to more easily see everything going on. But that's kind of a bummer because Mario looks like like he's two pixels tall. It's boring. Um, Sonic the 2 Game Gear did not compensate for its lack of screen real estate, which leads to a lot of jumps where you just blindly leap and hope there's something to land to on the other side or on the ground. But, 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 but I don't care. Are there loop-de-loops like in other Sonic games? Yep. Sonic can run up, do a circle, but weirdly, they don't show up until halfway through the game. Can Sonic drown? That's another question you're probably wondering. And you bet. It wouldn't be a Sonic game if he didn't. Although it doesn't have the super tense music that tells you you're about to let your beautiful blue hedgehog suffocate and die. But he still has that traumatic Ugh! animation. So that's cool. Um, it's still a pretty good game. It's, it's still a very pretty game. The colors pop. There's some great background elements like lightning and thunder. The water effects are nice. There's a lot of bespoke elements, weirdly, like Sonic can ride a mine cart or hang glide through the air. He can also bounce on water, which I don't remember him doing, but that's cool too. Uh, it's a very impressive package for a device that's ostensibly competing with the Game Boy. All right, though, no. let's sidestep for a minute. The Game Gear shares a lot of DNA with Sega's console system, the Sega Master System, which was Sega's 8-bit system from before the Genesis. Ostensibly, the Master System can be thought of as a competitor to the original Nintendo. And the Game Gear is a portable Master System. Well, almost. It's got the same innards, same processor, same button layout, what have you. Can't fit the same cartridges, but otherwise it's the same. The main difference is the screen size. Now, the Sega Master System wasn't super popular in North America, but it was in South America and Europe and Asia, so a lot of Game Gear games were ported to the Master System, like the Game Gear version of Sonic the Hedgehog 2. It also received a version on the Master System in the PAL territories, which is, you know, Europe, Asia, Africa, South America, Oceania. And the Master System port is the ideal way to play this version of Sonic 2, and the reason... I couldn't get very far in the Game Gear version was because the game is so zoomed in that by the time that first boss's attack render, it's just too late to get out of the way. On the Master System, I was able to beat him on that first try because I had an extra third of screen to see his attacks. Now, it's not all sunshine and lollipops, though. The Master System version still has a surprising amount of blind jumps where you can't see where to land and you just have to hope for the best. 
which is weird. I assumed that that was a zoom in thing. No, it's just weird game design. Uh, for me personally, though, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 for Game Gear was a fun trip down memory lane. I didn't remember actually any details from when I played it 30 years ago, just that the game was, you know, fun, what little of it I played. And it was nice to beat that first boss with save states and finally see the rest of the game that had vexed me so long ago. And I'm no Sonic connoisseur, so I can't honestly say if this is a lost gem. There's lots of 2D Sonic games out there between the Genesis and the Game Gear and the Game Boy Advance and the Neo Geo Pocket Color and the DS and even the 3DS. So I, I, I can't I can't honestly say where it stacks up. But Sonic 2 for Game Gear sure was a heck of a lot of fun. Thank you for watching. That was the game. And we'll see you again next time.